want to welcome you here this evening. My name is Jamie McEwen, and I'm the Financial Literacy Coordinator here at Washburn University. And I've been with financial aid for over 25 years, and I have a co-host. Hi, I'm Andrew Beats. I'm a financial aid specialist here at Washburn. I've been doing financial aid for the last five years. So we're going to walk you through this, and hopefully uh, we can answer any questions and kind of ease any of your concerns at starting the financial aid process. Tonight, um, if you have questions, there will be someone monitoring our chat panel. So feel free to put them in the chat um, area of the screen. But if it's a personal question, an individual question, we'd like for you to put that out on financialaid at washburn.edu. That's our email address to the office, financialaid at washburn.edu. And you will, we have people monitoring that tonight. So you'll get a, a response right away. So with that, you're gonna get an auto reply saying it's gonna take a couple days. That's kind of our normal auto reply, but we have people actively waiting for your questions. So use that for anything with any of your personal information or any sort of specific details that probably shouldn't be shared publicly. So yeah, take advantage of that. Thanks, Drew. Yep. All right, we'll just get started in then. She says, there we go, <laughs> there we go. All right, we're gonna talk just a little bit about uh, financial aid, just a quick overview of it. And then uh, Drew's gonna help you with that FSA ID and a FAFSA walkthrough. And of course your questions, we want you to get those to us uh, as we go through tonight, just whatever comes to mind, we're happy to answer. So the most general question that we get, uh, of course, is just, what is financial aid? And financial aid provides funding to students to help pay the cost of attending a post-secondary institution. It helps you pay for college. That's financial aid, whether it's from the federal or the state or scholarships, those are all financial aid. It's just where, where is it coming from? Different places the money is coming from. So financial aid just helps you pay for school. And the there's several programs and we're just gonna, I'm just gonna really just highlight these really quickly tonight. These are almost all from the FAFSA directly and those that aren't may require the FAFSA. So it is so important, I just can't say this enough, to get that FAFSA filed as early as you can. So I'm hoping everyone here tonight will get their FAFSA filed this week. It's important to do it early. There are grants that the feds offer to us, the Department of Education offer to us. Uh, the Pell Grant, which you can see is, is the kind of the, the largest grant that we have, it's up to $6,345 a year. It's always half a semester, but um, that is the big one that you can see if you are determined by the uh, FAFSA. There is a uh, Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, which the feds also provide for us, the Department of Education, but that one is limited funding. So again, so important to file early. The state of Kansas gives us a grant, the KCG, and again, limited funding, file early. Federal Work Study is another program um, that gives your ch uh, ch chance to work on our campus. A student can work on our campus. And so um, hopefully you guys will get some of that money, but it is really a wonderful opportunity to be involved on campus and make a little money to pay for school. The loan programs, the federal student loan programs come in two parts. One is to the student and that is your subsidized and unsubsidized loans. Everyone, everyone qualifies for student loans. So whether it's subsidized or unsubsidized depends on what your FAFSA says, but the subsidized is the interest-free loan. And you always want to start with subsidized money when you see your FAFSA, when you see your award letter, excuse me, when you get your awards, you wanna start with subsidized. And then the unsubsidized is the loan that accrues interest while you're in school. So that loan you uh, will find as well on your award letters. The Parent PLUS loan is for our parents. It's to help pay for school and they can apply to help their, their students pay for college. And then some scholarships do require the completion of FAFSA. So even if you think that you don't want any of the other programs or will qualify for grants or whatever it is, please complete the FAFSA because you may need it for some of your scholarship applications. And remember the number one resource for scholarships will be your high school counselors. So check with them for scholarships. 
There's different priority deadlines depending um, where you're going to attend school. The FAFSA itself opens October 1st. So it is open right now. It opened on the 1st of this month. But remember, you must file the FAFSA every year. So you want to put it on your phone, on your calendar, and nag yourself every October 1st. I always try to get people to do it very early. So nag yourself that first 10 days of October to file your FAFSA come October 2021, because you'll need to do it again. Uh, every, like I say, every school has their own deadline. So check with the schools that you're interested in to make sure you know their deadline. Washburn's deadline is November 15th. Now that doesn't mean you won't get aid after November 15th, but it does mean that you will for sure get all that you can get if you get in by November 15th. Um, and then I think this goes over to Drew. Yeah, so we're gonna play a short video that kind of explains the process to set up your FSA ID. That is what you're gonna to need to log into the FAFSA. And it's very important that you get this set up correctly because this is how you're going to access your FAFSA and how you're gonna access the FAFSA every year as you come back to complete it. So we're just gonna play that, there we go. Perhaps you're a student, parent, or loan borrower who needs to apply for financial aid, electronically sign your FAFSA form, or access other functionalities on the studentaid.gov site. To take full advantage of all our resources and log into studentaid.gov, you'll have to first create an FSA ID. Your FSA ID gives you access to federal student aid's features, tools, and can serve as your legal signature. Your FSA ID is your account username and password. To prepare to create your FSA ID, have your social security number, mobile phone, and your personal email address handy. To start, navigate to studentaid.gov and select Create Account. Once you're on the Create Account page, select the Get Started button. If you're completing a FAFSA form and are considered a dependent student, keep in mind that you will need to create your own separate FSA ID using your own personal information. A mobile phone number, email address, and social security number can be associated with only one FSA ID. For helpful tips throughout the FSA ID creation process, select the question mark icons that display next to each field. Next, you'll create your username, enter an email address, and create your password. We recommend using a non-school-based email address since you will need to access your federal student aid account after you graduate. Make sure you don't include private information such as your name or date of birth as part of your password. Quick tip, remember, an email address can be associated with only one username and password. Next, enter your permanent address and mobile phone number. Indicate if you want to use your mobile phone for account recovery. We highly recommend this option as it will help you access your account if you forget your username or password in the future. After selecting Continue, you'll be prompted to choose your communications preferences. On the Communications Preferences screen, select if you'd like to receive required communications from the Department of Education via email or by postal mail. We recommend email. Besides the required communications, we'll occasionally send you informational communications about grants, student loan forgiveness, or income-based repayment plans you may qualify for. You can opt to receive these by email, text message, or both, or choose not to receive informational communications. You'll also have the option to select English or Spanish as your preferred language for the communications we send you. Next, you'll select four challenge questions and answers. Memorize or keep these answers in a safe place in case you need them to help access your account in the future. Choose a question using the drop-down and add your answer in the text box. Select Show Answer to see your answer as you type it. Your answers are not case sensitive. You're almost there. On this step, you can review your information and confirm everything looks correct. If you need to make a correction, select the Edit button within that tile of information. After ensuring your information is correct, review and agree to the terms and conditions at the bottom of the screen. This is the last step before your account is completed. Select the Verify My Mobile Phone Number button 
and or the Verify My Email Address button to verify your contact information. If you entered an email address and mobile phone number for your account, you'll need to verify both. After selecting the Verify My Mobile Phone Number button, you will see a pop-up. Enter the six-digit secure code that was sent to the mobile number associated with your account. If you did not receive a code, select the Resend Secure Code link. After entering the six-digit code and selecting Continue, you will see a Verify checkmark under the Verify My Mobile Phone Number button. The same steps apply when verifying your email address. Select the Verify My Email Address button and enter the six-digit code you received in your email in the pop-up box. Note, the secure code will expire after 30 minutes. Once your contact information is verified, select Finish. Congratulations, you've successfully created your FSA ID. If you entered an email address, you will receive a confirmation email. Make sure you note your username and password and keep them in a safe place. You can begin using your account immediately, but it will take one to three days for your information to be verified by the Social Security Administration. Some of your actions in the site will be limited until your information is verified. However, with your newly created FSA ID, you can immediately complete and sign a first-time FAFSA form. You can also use your FSA ID to access your dashboard, review your loan balance, and explore additional dashboard features. You are now able to take control of your federal student aid journey and access all studentaid.gov has to offer. All right, these are our helpful links. They'll be posted, I believe, in our chat panel as well, or you can see them once we post to YouTube tomorrow. We'll be posting this video and they will be there. Um, I will tell you that Department of Education has a number of great videos that you can see that really do a good job. So the biggest thing to take, take away from this, you don't need to have gotten every bit of that information that went by. There was a lot in there. It's just kind of, good to not be the first time you see it as you're working through the FAFSA or as you're trying to get your FSA ID. So you're not expected to be an expert and that's why we're here to help. So I'm gonna walk you through uh, completing the FAFSA. I kind of have a demo version here that we can walk through and uh, just I'm gonna take you through step by step and we're gonna see how easy it can be. So here we're gonna log in with the FSA ID we just set up. It's gonna come up with a little warning making sure that you put in uh, that it's you completing it and uh, that the information you give is, is correct. So now uh, we're gonna be able to start a new FAFSA here. So here is a point that you're gonna, that you're gonna need to use. So this is your save key. This allows you to kind of stop where you are if you start the process and then realize you don't have all the documents you need. Maybe you don't have a tax form or maybe you don't know an address or something like that, you'll be able to save and pick up where you left off. So your save key doesn't need to be a super secret code. It's just something that you can remember and use when you need to come back. Uh oh, there we go. So, Again, here's a little outline that lays out for you of, of kind of the information you're going to need. Kind of the biggest one that I'd want to point out is the documents needed for the FAFSA. It gives you a whole checklist that you can kind of walk through, kind of make sure you have everything um, before you start, just to make the process easier. So here's the easiest part, you know, your name and social security number. Now, it is important, just like they said, that you use the name that appears on your social security card. If you're like me and you go by a shortened name, if you're a Robert that goes by Bobby or a Drew that go, that's actually an Andrew, you need to put your full name in there because nicknames and shortened names doesn't work. It's going to come up with an error and we're going to have to contact you and you're going to get delayed getting your fast fan. So moving on.
So just like they talked about, you're gonna to need to put in an email. Now this needs to be an email that you can get into. You don't wanna use your high school one or uh, an email that you use for like your spam accounts or that you you know don't have access to because you're gonna get a lot of information sent to you here. If, if you need to confirm citizenship or you need to confirm your marital status or something like that, this is the email that we're gonna start with. So you need to put in your permanent mailing address. Um, pretty straightforward, right? So for this example, it you know, defaults to Maryland, it's a good state. So you need to, if you've been lived there for the last five years, of course, and then citizenship. So then that you're gonna have a question here coming up, your high school completion rate or your high school completion status. Now, if you're going to be starting school for the first time as a first time freshman, you're looking at your first bachelor's degree. Um, we see a lot in the office, people get confused and put down graduate that they're a high school graduate, great job. That's not what we mean, we mean a graduate student. So you're gonna be a first year bachelor's degree. So you can try to clarify that again with the, uh, the question there. And then never into college. So here's the question about work study. Um, uh, Jamie pointed out how important work study is. Um, kind of want to reiterate people that engage with their universities, either through work study or for clubs, about 20% more successful. Um, your federal work study is going to really connect you to your school and get you a little money on the side. There are a lot of jobs um, offered at Washburn. Um, that are not federal work study, but they're also a lot more that I, I think you might be interested in if you do. And it also, it doesn't commit you to having to get this job or having to even use it. So you can put yes, no, or I don't know. I'm gonna put, I don't know right now. So here's gonna be a question that is gonna trigger something else. So if you put down mail here, um, they're gonna ask you if you signed up for a selective service. Selective service is formally called the draft. If you haven't signed up for it, you can sign up through it through here. It's important that it needs to be done. It's just a part of the process. So you're gonna to need to put in next your driver's license number if you have one. Uh, if you don't, well, then you don't need to. So uh, questions about, we're getting towards your, nope, not a dependency yet. So yeah, are you in foster care? Nope. So now we're getting into questions about your parents, the highest uh, level of education they've completed. So I'm gonna say high school for my parent one, and then I'm gonna say um, college for my parent two. So let's say, you know, my dad's a, a plumber, so he didn't go to college, and then my mom's a school teacher, so she has a college, so there we go. There you go. So now we need to put in the names of your high school, um state your high school is located you'd be able to confirm it if you can't get exactly there if you know you, you put down um an abbreviation for your school like a lawrence school if you put down like lawrence high school or lhs you'll be able to then confirm and sort and find it through there so that you have all the information incorrectly ah boo it's gonna make me put this in here Blue Pass, Kansas, there it is. So here's that confirm. Yep, it's gonna be say, oh, did you mean Lawrence High or did you mean Free State? And you'll be able to do this for all the Topeka schools as well. Okay, so now is an important part. You're gonna to need to put in your college's federal school code. Now you don't know what it is. So we're going to put no. Um, so you'll be able to search for us through this feature. Kansas. Eka. Search. And then you'll be 
through here. Hey, look, there we go. Washburn University, Washburn Tech. So I'm going to choose Washburn. And then you pick your housing plans if you want to live on campus or if you're going to live off campus. Um, I'm going to say on campus because our dorms and dining halls are the best. So I'm going to ask your marital status. This is important. Uh, it's, it's at the time you complete it. If you are getting married in the spring, don't put married. You're single right now. When, when you get married, we'll, we'll figure that out from there. So I'm going to put single next. Um, and then ask questions about children. If you have children or not, um, I'm going to say that I don't have any children. Move on to the next one. So here is another one of the main sticking points that we get with students in the office is the dependency questions is what we call these. So this is where students will say, hey, you know, I'm an independent student. I, I live by myself, I pay all my bills. But unless you can say yes to any of these questions, you are still a dependent student. I understand that some students take care of themselves or some parents don't support their kids as much as others. It's it's not that kind of question. So if you can't say yes to any of these by clicking them, you're gonna need to put one of these down here. So you're homeless, at risk of homelessness. If you do need to mark yes on any of those, are, are the schools, our office is gonna contact you and we're gonna work you through that process to complete the FAFSA after that. So then we get to this point with the uh, special circumstance for the parents. Um, this is saying that I'm a dependent student, means I'm gonna to need to provide parental information. So as a student, I'm gonna say that I'm unable to provide that because like a lot of incoming um, high school students, I don't have all my parents' tax information. I, I don't know about their assets and what they filed for two years ago. So I'm gonna say I'm unable to do that and hit next. Okay. So, um, special circumstance option. This is gonna walk you through some of those scenarios we talked about before where you couldn't say yes to any of those questions, basically that you're not 24, you don't have kids, that kind of thing. And then if you are possibly in some of those groups that can't be identified that way, it's gonna put you through here. So um, you can follow through these steps and work with our office. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna provide um, information about my parents. Kind of the, the generic, most people will answer that one. So I'm gonna say that my parents were, let's say married, Let's say, how about May of 1977? It's a good year. So at this point, you're gonna need your parents' information. Let's see if I can skip past this. All right. So here's something I can bring up. The, uh, if your parents don't have a social security number, you can put in all zeros and it will accept that. So we'll just put that in right here. Say Beats, it's a good strong name. And then let's do May 12 of 1950. How about that? And then the parent's first initial. There we go. Okay. So then, since I put in that I have both parents, I need to repeat this information as well. So, parent social security number, I'm going to put in all zeros just. As an example, I'm going to say that my parents have the same last name. And I'm going to say the first initial there. Let's just have everybody born in May. How about that? And how about the exact same age? Why not? So I'm going to ask you about your parents. And it's going to ask, have they lived in the same state for the last five years? So in this example, it says Maryland. It doesn't matter. It's going to say Kansas when you go through to do it. I'm going to say yes. What this question is doing is trying to establish residency. So there you go. So here we go. Um, 
this is where we need to start listing the number of people you have in your household. So uh, I'm going to say that um, there's just three. I'm gonna say I'm an I'm a, I'm a only child, but don't worry, I probably had lots of friends. Um, so we'll just skip down to the end here. Um, the number in college, number in household, it's just gonna be me. All right, so there, we've successfully saved it. So now we get to the point where we need the parent's financial information. Um, when you go in to complete this, uh, your parents will have the opportunity to bring their information over from the IRS. Um, I highly, highly recommend that you use that. Um, that is, for one, the easiest and the most accurate way to complete the FAFSA. There's no more having to look and find what box and what dollar amount is in whatever box and then you, then you do it incorrectly and it comes to us and then we have to contact you and walk through getting that all set up again. Um, it's they're gonna be the same step for the parents or for the student as well. If you did file, I would just recommend just go ahead and linking it. And if you didn't file, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna say they are not going to file just for ease. Um, and that's where it would tell you. So there, uh, you'll be able to put in how much your parents uh, earned in wages. I'm gonna say mm, about $10,000. And then let's say they work together, have the exact same job just for an example. So we're gonna skip through those remaining questions because really working through an example isn't really ideal here since everybody's financial situation is always going to be a little bit different. So this should then advance along. There we go. Oh, perfect. Well, it wouldn't be 2020 if we didn't have a giant error with any of the federal system. So we'll just go a little acapella here since that didn't quite work as out. We we're basically at the end anyway. So you're gonna get the financial questions where it's gonna ask you about your assets and ask, and that's why I just recommend just bringing your information over from the IRS. If you're the student, I would recommend doing the same process as well. It makes it extremely easy. Once you finally complete that FAFSA and then you sign it electronically, it gets sent to our office. We download new FAFSAs every day. Uh, it normally takes a few days for it to get from the government system to our office and then for us to process it. Um, and then you're on your way to getting your financial aid and then paying for college and moving on and being successful. Um, that's about it. Is there any questions that we could at, or answer or has everybody directed their questions to the email account? Thank you, Drew. Uh, yep. We did have a few questions that came in okay. over um, over this. And I wanted to share those because we weren't able to uh, update all of those through um, through the chat. Yeah. So one of the questions was, who needs an uh, FSA ID? And we would recommend the student have one. And if the student is dependent, then one of their parents to have one. It should be the parent that is filling out the uh, FAFSA that has one. If there are two parents in the household, both parents do not need one to fill out the FAFSA. You may need them later if you're doing different things like applying for the parent plus loan with different parents. But uh, for the FAFSA, you just need the student to have one. And if they're dependent, one parent to have one. Um, another question that we got was, uh, what information do you do I need for my FAFSA? I would have ready the FSA ID for the student, the FSA ID for the parent, um, the income and tax information from 2019. Uh, it will change every year, but for right now, uh, for this one right here, this FAFSA for this upcoming fall semester, it's the 2019 income and tax information. You'll need that for the student. And if the student's dependent on the FAFSA, then you will need that for the parents in the household. And it would be the parent that's filling out the FAFSA and if they're married, their spouse uh, information. Um, as Drew mentioned, one of the questions was, should we use the data retrieval tool? It can be kind of a, a little bit of a pain to get it working. 
Um, it can be a little finicky on accepting addresses and, and finding a match, but it is so worth it. It will save you so much time. It, it brings all the information in, it plugs it into the FAFSA for your income. So you don't have to go through and answer questions, match up lines and try to figure out if this is what it's referring to. Um, it, it'll save you so much time there. And on the back end, there's some processes you might get selected for that having this done, you can just skip right over certain steps. So if you're able to do it, great. The FAFSA will tell you if you're eligible, give it a shot. If not, it'll take you right back to that same spot and let you just continue on and you can put in the um, income information. Um, we are available to help you out. Even if you're not gonna be attending a Washburn school, we hope you are, but even if you're not, we're happy to help you out. We have our uh, information in the chat and we'll be posting uh, information later. Feel free to reach out to us. We'll be happy to help you out. Financial aid administrators, ho hopefully at all schools, they're really not that scary. So uh, feel free to reach out to them too if, if you know you're attending a, a specific school and have a question for them, they should be willing to help you out. Um, and then the last question we got was, I completed my FAFSA, so what next? So um, really what you should do is keep an eye out for mail and email from the school that you, um, that, that you added. You can add up to 10 schools. That was a great question we had in the chat at a time. Keep an eye out for information from those schools. They'll let you know what the next step in the process is. Uh, there, there could be additional paperwork to complete before they can tell you what your awards are. They might have additional requirements like having you apply for the school. Uh, so just so just watch for that. If it's been a little while, you might want to contact them too. Typically, right now, schools are still getting their uh, financial aid year set up. They're processing the new information. So you might, you might not hear back from them for another few weeks, uh, but definitely reach out to them if it's been over a month and you haven't heard anything back. You'll also get an email from the FAFSA itself to let you know when your FAFSA is processed, usually within about 48 hours of submitting it. Those were the questions we had, unless there's other questions right now. Jamie, did you want to add something? No, I think I think um, we covered a pretty good amount of it tonight. I think uh, the main thing is to take your time and read when you complete the FAFSA. I think that's where most people run into problems is they kind of uh, get nervous because it's got our taxes on there and they're asking you a lot of personal questions. So I just think take your time read it, reach out to us or to any school. Um, if you need help with it, there that's what we're here for. We want you to be able to file this and get it in. And, and then my last thing is file it now. I mean, let's get on it and do it quickly. That's what I want you to do is file as early as you can. Great, great. Um, well, thank you, Drew and Jamie for walking us through the FAFSA. Um, we still have, uh, we won't be able to answer any more questions if you send them later on tonight through our email, but we will take a look and we'll get back to you as soon as possible with that. It'll take us a little bit of time to get this posted, but we will try to post this to Facebook or YouTube uh, just so you can repeat the session if, if there were things that you missed. And again, I'm so sorry for the inconvenience and the delay in getting this started. Uh, it's our first time trying to go with YouTube live. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to uh, do, do a little bit better for you next time. Thanks again. Good night. Bye.